You are watching Brian Northman Photography, where it's my mission to inspire and support the photographic community by passing on my knowledge, passion and skills. Keep watching this video to find out how you can use three focus stacking techniques to improve your landscape photography. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the first proper video really of um, 2021. And um, my previous one, which was about 10 days ago, was just really for a chance to reflect on last year and understand how we can use portfolios to improve our um, work moving forward. Little did I know at that point that it wouldn't be possible for me to go out and shoot that much more video footage out in the field, but I did manage to get some done. So the next few videos are gonna be a combination of what I shot on that day um, so hopefully we've got three to four different images to look at and um, I can bring them back into here, show the video clips that I've done previously, edit the images and still produce some useful content for you. So today's video is going to be, out be about focus stacking. And focus stacking is something that I've um, uh, done before on the channel and I'll probably do it again in the future as well because I keep learning new things about it all the time. So in this video, I've got three different ways that you can use focus stacking in your landscape photography. Yes, we're gonna look at the normal standard um, focus stacked image, and I'm gonna explain why in this case, I didn't like the picture that it, that it resulted in. I'm going to use focus stacking um, for exposure blending to show how we can maybe darken the sky and focus stack at the same time. So that might be something you're interested in doing. And I'm also gonna do a focus stack image where I've actually managed to maintain a blurred background, but foreground to midground is nice and sharp. And that's the final one, which I'm gonna edit at the end for you. But before that, join me out there in the field, um, because I have got some footage from when I took the original photograph, and then um, we'll come back here and we'll edit those images. Right guys, I hope that you can see me and I'm not too underexposed or anything, because it's quite contrasty. Um, I sort of struggled with the composition after the last picture that I took because the problem is is that um, there's a lot of people starting to come up now and it's making it a little bit difficult to find compositions and not only that um, the, the sun's getting higher and higher and it's getting contrastier and we're not getting so much good sort of light on, on things that I wanted but I come across this um, this this rock and these this snow sort of going across the top of these rocks here and um, I thought it would look good if I could get in nice and close and pick out the details on those on those sort of granules of ice and snow which are still left behind. Um, and obviously in the background we've still got some nice light falling on the side of this tour and the blue sky and the clouds in, up there as well. So it all looks together quite nice. Um, might do it as a black and white, might do it as a colour, I'm not quite sure yet. Obviously with a picture like this, because I'm really focusing really in close, I, I think that, that part of the picture there, that's pretty much um, how far we are away from the lens. So to get this in focus and everything right the way through in focus is a little bit harder to do. And uh, the way in which I'm going to do that is I'm going to use something called focus stacking. So um, I've set up the picture and um, I've focus stacked right the way through this. I've probably taken pictures um, sort of like here, he, I've probably focused, sorry, try that again. I've probably focused here, 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 right back on the edge of, of here as well, and then um, one on the background finally to try and get that in, um, sh in sharp focus. What I've also done is um, it is possible for me to leave the back one out of focus if I want, leave that blurred so that um, it's just this snow and this texture which really comes out. And also, because the sky is a little bit brighter over there, the last sharp picture that I've taken of the background, I've um, not underexposed, but I've, I've um, sort of brought the exposure level down on it just to bring that back in. So that if I use that one, I've already sorted out the, um, the contrast range in the pictures already as it is. So hopefully that, that's working out pretty well. Um, I think that's probably going to be it for this location now. So um, let's get back and edit it. Okay, so um, that really sets up the idea behind how I was taking the image, why I was taking it, what it looked like on the day that I was out there. I have to be honest, when I got back and looked at the photographs, I wasn't really that pleased with them. 
and um, sometimes you've got to leave it a few days, um, a week or so, like I did in this case, between taking the picture and actually starting to look at editing them because sometimes it, it works better that way. The final image, which I'm going to show you at the end of this video, I'm actually reasonably pleased with. Um, but I was, when I first came back, I thought, oh no, I've, I've got these images and I can't possibly use them. But they are, they are there. There are some really good learning points in them. And I'm going to go through the edits with you now inside the Lightroom. So join me over at the computer and um, we'll see what we can do from there. Okay, so I've already got um, Lightroom open. I'm sure everybody knows how to do that. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, the images have already been imported. They're up on the screen and I've highlighted the ones in green and selected those for you just so that we're not looking at anything else to confuse the situation. So let's have a look at that screen. So I've got six images up on the screen at the moment and we're going to use um, five of them um, for the first edit. So the first um, focus stack that we're going to do um, uses these images here, um, the first ones which you can see on the screen. And basically this is just going to be a standard um, focus stack. So we're just going to select all of those um, images, so all five of them. And we're going to export those into Helicon Focus. Now there is other videos where I go into this in some detail, so I'll put a link up to that on the screen for you um, because it's not about going through those parts in this video. I just want to show you different ways of doing it. So let's go into um, File, Export, and uh, we can pick Helicon Focus. It's already selected for that. I've already got it selected as DNG, so it keeps it as a raw file. And we're just going to click on Export. So let's wait for that to go in there and we'll, we'll cut to Helicon Focus in a moment. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, once, once again, I'm not going to go into massive details on how to um, set up and, and use the images in Helicon Focus. Okay, so basically we've got all five images on the right hand side of the panel selected. And if I just click on um, render at the bottom, it's now going to create um, the stack, uh, the focus stack version of this. And when it's finished, we'll put this back into Lightroom. Okay, so it's done that job for me now. Everything's been finally stacked. Um, I'm going to go into the saving module and, and we're going to save this back um, so it comes out in Lightroom. As you can see from that screen now, we've got fairly good front to back sharpness. So I'm going to click on save and it will come up with another dialog box of where we want to save it to. And when we click on save on that one, It's going to output that back for me. So here we are back inside of Lightroom. Now this is where some of the magic begins because what I want to do now is I want to create the same stacked um, image that I did before, but this time I'm going to use the one which has got the underexposed, or should I say the darker um, background in it. And this is where the sort of magic happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the um, first four images so command uh, and uh, click on the images. And rather than select the standard one, I'm going to pick the darker image on the end. So we're going to export those exactly the same way into um, Helicon Focus and export it back into Lightroom. Now I'm not going to bother going through that for you because you've already seen it once. But effectively what it's going to do is it's going to pick that underexposed or that darker image as the background image for this stack. That enables me to blend a darker background in, at the same time as doing an exposure stack. So that's the second way that we can use um, focus stacking to blend our images together. We can also vary the exposure. It's a good way of dealing with um, an overexposed sky or background or something in your images. So let's just export these now. And so that's the second version complete. And we'll compare all these images in a minute. So we've got two images up on the screen now. One, both of them are purple, and you can see that one is slightly darker in the background. The final and third way, which I'm going to use um, Helicon Focus um, to, to stack this image, is I'm going to select the first four pictures. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to select any of the images which have the sharp background. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to leave the background very slightly out of focus. 
So I've selected these on the screen. Once again, I'm going to go through the export very, very quickly. Um, and you guys won't have to watch it all. The um, stacked images in purple. So what I'm going to do for you now is I'm actually going to get rid of the green images. So we've just got these stacked ones up on the image. And to be honest, if we go into this and then click on that one, we can look at them um, larger up on the screen. So I think we can see from this the way that it's worked. So in the first image, in the top right hand corner is the original stacked image. So there we can see that we've got front to back sharpness, normal exposure, and to be honest, it, it looks fine, it looks okay. The bottom image on the screen looks very slightly darker, certainly a lot darker in the background. Now to be honest, the foregrounds come out a little bit darker as well. And I think that's really to do with the way in which the, the light was changing um, on the foreground as things were altering. But if you look um, in the sky in the top right hand corner and compare these three images, you'll see that the bottom one um, is a little bit darker. And that's why I did it because on the on the camera screen out in the field, it was showing that the this area was blown out. Now it's not unrecoverable, but in some situations it might be. So it enabled me to um, blend a darker background in, and I can see situations where you would want to use that. So in the top left hand corner, this one has got a sharp foreground and a blurred background. And out of the three images, the three versions, this is the one that I that I wanted to focus on. I have to be honest, when I got these pic when I got these images back on the screen originally, I didn't really want to edit them. I didn't like the look of them and um, for whatever reason I, I just didn't enjoy them. But over time um, I came back and looked at them again and decided that actually, you know what, the one with the slightly blurred background had some potential and um, it did remind me of the day. It did capture what I was trying to do. It does show you that bright light on the background. It does show you the texture on the foreground. It does show you the frost and, and, the, and you can see that it's a bit cold. But I just need to enhance that a little bit in the editing to get that feel over a bit more. So I'm gonna lose the bottom image because we don't need that one anymore. It just leaves us with these two. And um, we're gonna lose the top, the bottom image in there as well. And then in a minute, we're gonna go into develop. And this is the image which we're going to work on. So let's click on and move into develop so we can see the image full screen. All right, so I've opened up the um, fully stacked image now in the develop module inside of Lightroom, which is um, up on your screen now, hopefully. And um, what, I've, what I've done is I've already pre-edited this image. So what I'm going to do to make things a little bit quicker, a little bit easier for you is just talk through the settings and the changes that I've made. And the reason for that really is that I don't want to um, necessarily go into the edit in detail because that's not what this video was really about. It was about using different methods of focus stacking and blending the background exposures and, and using a diffuse background and using those sort of techniques. But I do want to get over to you how we can enhance this image further to bring out what it was I was really interested in and what attracted me to taking it in the first place. So when I was out in the field, I, I, I talked about the um, really crisp um, textures and everything on the, on the rock in the foreground in front of me. And I wanted to capture those ice crystals and, and, those, and the granite and everything and have that really nice, crispy, sharp feel to it. And what I found enhanced that even more, and that's the why that's why I edited the focus stack in the way that I did, was the diffuse background, the contrast between the foreground and the background. Now in this image, we've got different tonal range in terms of color. We've got blues and colds, and we've got very warms of the sun in the background. And, and I wanted to enhance that as well. We're going to go through some basic edits now and then I'm going to go and show you how I've used the brush tool, the graduate tool and the radial filter tool as well to add some more interest to it. So let's bear in mind all the time what we're trying to do. So the first thing that I did was I actually increased the exposure a little bit by plus 1.25. Now I just did that because I wanted to make sure that I was using um, all the highlight range that I can. Snow can come out and look very grey if you're not careful with it. So although I wanted to bring it up as far as I could, I didn't want to blow out the highlights. 
Um, so I went as far as I could with it up to the point the highlights were just starting to um, clip. I've also increased the vibrancy a little bit and the saturation a little bit to enhance the tones which are already there in the image to bring out some of the cold blues and bring out some of the warmth in the background. And then we can also look, we can always look at that later on um, and how we can change it. And I did that by going down to the HSL panel and looking at the um, saturation part of that. So what I did was I've increased the oranges by plus 20, the yellows by plus 26. So those warm tones and sun in the background should stand out and lift out a little bit more than they did on the original. The blues as well in there as well, those need to be a little bit colder in the foreground just to make that contrast a little bit greater than it was. So I've gone plus 49 on the blues as well. So that's sort of adding a little bit more interest in there even more. And split toning, um, I've started doing this quite a bit with some of my um, color images because I find that sometimes it's quite good with this sort of image to add a little bit of extra warmth into the highlights. Only a small amount, I've gone plus 19, but I've also added a little bit of more um, blue, plus eight on the saturation into the shadows. And I find that that sort of helps as well. So let's go on to some more selective things that I've done. So the first thing I did was with a graduated filter. So if we pick that graduated filter now and turn that one on, you'll see that eventually it'll catch up on the screen with us and transfer that change. So clicking on that one on the top, there we go. So we can see that um, turning on this graduated filter and the area now shaded in red for you shows the area which it's impacting and has darkened down the background because I want that dark ground to be a little bit darker and uh, maybe just drift out a little bit more that way. We've still got those nice rich tones in there, it just tones it back a little bit more and leaves a little bit more interest in the sky by doing that. And I did that by reducing the exposure by 0.5, so nearly a whole stop. I pulled the contrast down, contrast down to minus 19. The reason for that is because I don't want the background to be as crisp and stand out and contrasty as the foreground. The highlights, I want to tone those back a little bit in the background, minus 42, minus 42 on the whites as well. And we can see the impact that that's had on the histogram by just taking um, the, the tops away from the whites and the highlights at this end here. So that's worked quite well. The texture and the clarity, I've reduced both of those in that area. So it's just softening it and once again, diffusing it a little bit more than the foreground. And when we get to the foreground and we start looking at the um, brush tool, and we can use that as well now, and we'll turn the brush tool back on so you can see the impact of that. So the brush tool was used just on this granite down in the foreground. And we'll bring up the, uh, the, the detail on there. So you can see the area that I've painted in with the brush tool, and that's just impacting just that area in the foreground. And what I've done is the, the key of this has been to make this stand out a little bit more, give it that little crisp edge and really show and enhance that texture. And I've done that by reducing the exposure slightly, um, which just darkens it a little bit, increasing the contrast, increasing the highlights then. So although I've taken the exposure back, I've brought the whites back up to make those, to make sure that snow and that frost is really nice and white. Reduce the shadows a little bit, reduce the whites just a little bit to hold that um, clipping just in place. And once again, now, this is where some of the magic happens on that foreground boost the texture and the clarity, because then it's gonna really bring out those textures, which is exactly what we've done here. Um, I've done a little bit in the reds and the oranges and the blues, sorry. I Cut the last section out. So the next bit that I needed to do was to go to looking at um, what we've done with the, um, uh, okay. And the last thing I want to do is to add a slight vignette to the picture. And the reason for that is to basically darken the edges and draw the viewer into the center of the screen. And the last thing I want to do is to use the radial filter. 
And the reason I'm going to use the radial filter is simply just to darken down these corners in the screen. And the way that I like to do that is to basically zoom out um, to one to eight. And that gives us an overview of the whole picture and we can look at the whole thing. And then if we just actually um, turn that on so we can have a look at what we're looking at. So we can see where we've drawn it out. The red area highlighted on the screen shows the area that's going to be impacted by it. And we're just pulling the exposure back to minus 2.63. So quite a lot on it, but bear in mind, we've got it very soft. We've, we've got a large filter on there. So it's only the edges of that radial filter which are really impacting the um, image itself. So let's just turn the mask overlay off so we can see what that final image looks like. And that folks is the completed image. So um, before I put that final image up for you to look at, um, I hope that you found this video interesting. I'm gonna be doing some similar videos over the next few weeks using um, the last images that I took when I was able to get out and shoot. So we'll go into some different pictures later on and um, all, all winter, all taken um, pretty much on the same day to be honest. Um, but hopefully I can uh, give you some different ideas on, on your winter photography. Um, and how you can edit these images and enhance um, hopefully what you've taken. So no more to say other than um, as soon as you can get out and enjoy your photography, do that again. In the meantime, um, why not get into Lightroom and Photoshop, do a bit of editing and uh, hopefully you can uh, improve your photography that way. So let's have a look at that final image. Thank you for watching. It makes a big difference to my channel when you hit the thumbs up button and it only takes seconds. Please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new updates. I'm inspired to make more content by your comments, so please get involved. Don't forget the newsletter and free ebook offer on my website. Until next time, get out, get creative and enjoy your photography.